We're officially done with work. This is the first full day that I worked as an electrician. I got to run a bunch of conduit, so not the most efficient at it yet, but take a look, this is what we got done. Uh, basically all the surface mounted conduit that you see in here, we did today, and it's not that, not that crazy, but starting over there, you can see we've got our network of boxes on the ceiling with a half inch EMT going down that way. So each one of those boxes is gonna be where there's gonna be a light. So all the way down, one, two, three, four. And then on this side, we have three quarter inch. So between that box and that box is three quarter because we're pulling more conductors through there. And then it drops down over here where we're putting a bunch of uh, boxes for receptacles along the bench here, the workbench. And then coming across the ceiling, we, we have three quarter again. And the reason it's three quarter for this stretch is that uh, the three way switch, which is switched way up there at the top of those stairs, as well as way down over here at that front door. Um, we needed extra conductors in there, so we ran three quarter across that way. And then we also have uh, power coming over to the door opener, so that's just a standard receptacle that's being powered right there. So that's half inch coming off of the three quarter. And then down over here, we've, uh, we ran a little bit of conduit for the low voltage. So there's these little eyes down along the bottom of the overhead door. One over there and one right here. Those have got to look at each other. So you need low voltage. So we ran some half inch EMT up and across and it meets right there in the middle. And uh, just so that it shields it and makes it look nicer than having a low voltage wire dangling. And then after we got all the conduit put up, we did start pulling wires into the conduit. So the first uh, couple are right here. This is uh, where the there's going to be a three-way switch, so we have the two blue wires, our travelers, and the black wire is our hot wire that's going to be feeding that three-way, I believe. But the way you push these up and through is actually really neat. You push them up over to your first box, and then you feed extra through, and then you shove it through over to the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and you kind of just have to keep working back and forth, pulling the wire a little bit more each time as you work your way across. But we pulled continuous wires from right here, up, across, and over and down to that switch over there at the top of the stairs. So a pretty long pull, and it went pretty smoothly. To briefly describe the installation process of EMT conduit, uh, it's very straightforward, and it's kind of neat because the EMT uh, is taking the place of having a ground wire. As you can see in this box right here, we don't have any grounding conductors, and that's because the actual metal pipe and fittings are the effective ground fault current path. So when we need to attach a ground wire to our switch, we will just connect it to that little uh, raised portion right there. That's where our ground wire will connect. And then that will come out and connect to the, the device or the receptacle. But it won't be connecting to a grounding conductor because there isn't one present. So you basically take your, your EMT, you cut it to the length you need, Strap it to the wall using these just standard EMT brackets. Then you use one of these EMT fittings and you tighten down the set screw so that it makes good contact with the pipe. And then you tighten the lock nut on the inside and that's gonna allow that connection to be secure for the purposes of the ground fault current path. As you can see, we've used a couple screws in each box to hold the box in place to the structure. Now, whenever you make a cut, before you put your fittings together, uh, you need to deburr the end of each piece of EMT. As you can see, this one on the left has not been deburred, and the one on the right has been deburred. So I'll put a link to that uh, tool, the deburring tool, in the description, and also put a, a picture of it up here on the screen for you to understand what I'm talking about. But you need to make sure that those are nice and clean. You shouldn't really be able to like reach in and get cut by it because if you can get cut by it, then the insulation on the wire could definitely be subject to damage. This is the other thing we got started on. We got started hanging this uh, panel in here. Uh, there was some complications just with the basically deciding how high this had to be in the room. Uh, There's some structural members in the wall that prevented us from putting it a little bit higher. So as you can see, we did bring these, I guess that's uh, what, 
one, two, three, four circuits through the bottom of the panel in the back. So we actually uh, custom measured and drilled those holes and added those little uh, plastic NM connectors. Uh, so that's pretty nice and it worked out really well. Instead of having those wires coming out of the wall and then going up and into the panel, we were just able to bring them straight into the back of the panel. As you can see, our main uh, wires haven't been pulled in yet, um, but we have all of our circuits or a bunch of the circuits hanging here ready to be um, tied into the panel. Uh, personally, I think we could have had those be a little bit longer, but I think that's partially because originally uh, the panel was gonna be mounted a little bit higher. They're long enough though, I think we should be able to make it work just fine. So overall, I think uh, it went pretty well today. I definitely improved with just being able to handle and install conduit better than I would have before. So that's really nice and just got to learn some best practices. I still don't know much about, you know, making offsets and uh, like this piece over here, uh, let me just show you. I was up on the man lift and uh, my coworker just handed me this piece. And it's that piece right there. It goes over, curves back and down again. And obviously it's not super complicated, but there's several different like little things he had to take into account. Like he swung it out far enough right there where it comes out past the piece of conduit that was already up against the wall. So to be able to do that, and I think he maybe had to tweak it a tiny bit to change it one time, but it was pretty much perfect. And I don't even know how he, how he does that. Uh, so I definitely have a long ways to go when it comes to uh, being able to skillfully handle the bending of conduit. So today I was mostly just installing it and uh, doing the <laughs> less skilled part of the job. Here's the rack that we unrolled the wire off of. Works really nicely. Uh, when he was pulling the wire, uh, I was basically feeding it off of these rolls and just making sure that it was loose so that it could be pulled up into the box without it catching on any of the sharp edges. Uh, the one other thing that was really neat is uh, he had this special roller device. I'll try to put a picture of it here on the screen if I can't find it. But basically, right up there, we were pulling wires straight into that box, right up there. And there's this little cover that you put on it temporarily that allows the wires to be pulled uh, into it without them getting uh, basically caught on the edges of the box. So that concludes my first day on the job as an electrician. So we start again tomorrow at 7.30, I think, is when we get started again on this same project. So I'm looking forward to it. So if you have any thoughts or comments about how the day went or whatever, let me know in the comment section below. Catch you later. I'm gonna go grab some food because I haven't eaten anything since six, six o'clock this morning. And now it's like 4.30 in the evening. So, I'm hungry. I think there's a free, free cheeseburger at Burger King.